Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 104. So in this tutorial we're going to start working on our basic uh, mob AI. Uh, the first part we're going to go over is the movement. Let's have them uh, start moving a little bit more advanced than we had in the first 10 tutorials. But uh, still simple enough that pretty much anyone can implement this. So with that said, we'll go ahead and open up Unity. And I'll also open up Mono Develop. Now this is actually my second attempt at recording this. Uh, the first time I recorded it and apparently my mic wasn't plugged in and I got no volume. So I'm just going to quickly redo it. And there's a few things I wanted to go over that I'm not sure if I covered in a previous tutorial. So let's just start off with the player input. At the very top I added this require component and it adds the script advanced movement to whatever I add the player input to. So when you're creating your player prefab and you drag the player input class onto it, it'll automatically add the advanced movement script if you don't have it. And then if we go and look at the advanced movement script, I've gone ahead and made a list of all the animations that the player needs and their names as well as the ones that the mobs need. Now obviously we're going to be adding more animations to both of these lists but for now this is the ones that I'm using. And I've also added a require component component for the character controller since we need that to be able to have this script move uh, whatever it's attached to around. So to start off I've gone ahead and created a new C Sharp script. I've just called it AI and they're both capital. Uh, you feel free to use uh, their old enemy AI if you wish, but I'm creating a new class for it. So I started off by requiring two components. Uh, one is the advanced movement because we're going to be using the exact same movement controls that we're using for our player, uh, for our mobs, and the same animations. And I've also added a sphere collider, and we'll be using this to detect when a, a player is close enough to us instead of always having it checked to see you know, how far away a player is. Uh, we don't need that. We can just have it sit there and do absolutely nothing uh, so it doesn't take up resources. And when a player enters that sphere collider, we'll have an on-trigger enter event. And that's when he basically wakes up and starts doing things. So since I've got the script made, I'm going to Unity. And I've got this new mob here, uh, Bluezilla. I've gone ahead and switched mobs because the giant one had a little bit of a bug in his walk animation and well hopefully this one doesn't I haven't actually tried it yet if so I know I've got at least one that doesn't have it so I'm just gonna take this AI script we created there's nothing in it yet except for the require components and I'm just gonna drag it onto Bluezilla and you notice it automatically adds my sphere collider my character controller my advanced movement and the AI script now the sphere uh, collider uh, we'll do that later because we're not going to be using it for this tutorial. Let's start off with the character controller. We'll want it to this little um, green capsule here. We're going to want it to encompass most of our mob. So I'm going to go to the top view. And I'm going to move so I can actually get the mob centered. And I'm just going to go ahead and center the capsule on them. So that's pretty much center on the X. Uh, looks pretty good on the Z and we want to know about the Y. I'm going to have to switch to this side so I'm going to have to move the Y up quite a bit. So Y looks about there so we're going to say 2.1 for that and generally the height is almost always double whatever your Y value is so we're saying 2 point, oh, sorry, 4.2 and we're always going to want to increase that radius so I'm going to go to the top view again and I'll just start dragging the radius out and that encompasses pretty much all of them. Uh, one final look to make sure. Yeah, that looks good. And you'll notice we have our sphere collider down here. Uh, we'll add some code later to automatically make sure the sphere collider is set to trigger. Uh, for now I am just going to click it just so it doesn't cause any problems. And with that done, all the values here should be set. Now there's a few I wanted to make private, but we'll, we'll come back and do that later because 
uh, keeping them public uh, allows you to watch the values as they change and it can really help with uh, debugging. So let's just go back into our AI script. Alright, so I've deleted all the code I've written before and I'm just going to rewrite it. I guess the benefit is I've already written it so it's uh, still pretty fresh in my mind. So the first thing we're going to want to do is have our mob be able to know what it's supposed to chase, you know, our player. So we're going to want to be able to uh, capture the either our game object or a transform. Now I personally, I just like to grab the transform. So I'm going to make a public transform. And I'll just call this target. Now later on, we'll be getting this target from the sphere collider when you enter that sphere collider. But for now, we're actually just going to grab it in the start. And I'm going to grab the character that's tar uh, target uh, that has a tag of player. So I'm just going to come up and make sure that my player, or at least the player prefab that I'm using, has the tag of player, which mine does. So I'm just going to say geo, well, game object, sorry. And it's just a temporary. I'm just going to call it geo. And I'm going to say find, or I guess it would be game object, dot find game object with tag. Make sure you get the game object, the singular. And then the tag we're looking for, which is player. Now I'm going to add a little debug statement here just to make sure that we grabbed it. So if geo equals null, I'm just going to send out a debug error. And I'm just going to say could not find the player. And then after that, I want to take uh, that GO and assign its transform to my target. So it's just target equals GO dot transform. So at the very start, my mob is going to be grabbing you know, my player now. Now there's no range setting or anything on here. So as soon as the game starts up, it automatically knows where my player is. And that's not really what we want. But like I said, we'll be changing that later when we... Uh, start working with our sphere collider. So for testing purposes, uh, let's just jump straight into the update. And we'll start doing our moving around in here. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is just to make sure that it actually has a target. So I'm just going to say if target. If it doesn't have a target, I don't want it to run any of this code because you'll just get errors. Now with the way we have this set up with using advanced movement to actually move things around, uh, the easy way to, that we used to do it was just have it to use uh, like transform dot, you know, look at target and it would just automatically rotate towards the target and we could just say, you know, move forward. Uh, we can't do it this way as if we remember in our player input, uh, what we're doing is sending in these uh, enumerations. So we're going to have to do it a little bit differently, but it's really not that hard because if you think about your mob, you know, he's standing there, he's facing forward, and you can kind of break the world up around him into four sections. So you'll have, you know, left forward, right forward, left back, and right back. And we can actually tell basically what quadrant the player is in uh, just by doing a few simple tests. So let's go ahead and we'll start doing those. So the first thing we'll want is a vector three. And we'll just want to know the direction. So I'm just going to create dir. Now this is going to be equal to our target dot position minus our position. So since we are going to be using our transform, we should cache that as well up here. So private transform and it's just my transform and in the start we'll just grab that. Now later on we can actually get this value from another script that's attached to our our, um, our mob. 
since we don't really need to have every script have its own reference of our transform. But since we're just trying to you know get this basic script up and running, uh, we'll just make its own uh, public or private variable here for it. So we're going to want our transform position. And then we're going to want to normalize it so that it only has a length of one. Now we can use vector three dot dot uh, to basically get the direction that the player is in. Now we've used this before in one of the first 10 tutorials and I believe it was enemy attack three. I'm not sure what number of the tutorial, tutorial was, but it's in the first 10. So let's go ahead and implement this. And this with this here, we'll be able to tell if it's either bef in front of us or behind us. So we'll create a float and I'm just going to call it direction. And we'll have it equal to vector three dot, then the word dot. Then we'll want to take that dir we got from the line above and transform forward. But if you do a debug on this, uh, you'll get a number between one and negative one. If he's in front of you, uh, it'll be a positive number and one being dead center in front of you. And if it's a negative number, then he's behind you with a uh, negative one being you know dead center behind you. So with just those two lines of code, we already know if we have to go forward or not. So we can now tell that other script that we have that you know if it's in front of us, move forward. So if direction is greater than 0.9f, so remember one is perfectly in front of us and I'm allowing a 10% variance. So basically if he's almost in front of us, I'm going to want to move forward. So we'll send a message and we can actually just copy it right out of here, the one where he moves forward. It's the exact same line and I'll just paste it in. So we'll send message to the move me forward function and we're going to be passing the value advanced movement dot forward dot forward which is just uh, the value in the enumeration we want. Now I'm not going to have my mob move backwards so I'm just going to put an else in here and if he's not moving forward then he's not moving forward or backwards. So I'll just paste that line in and we'll send the value of none to the enumeration. And everything looks okay. Oops, this should have been transform dot forward. And everything looks okay, so let's go into Unity. See if there's any errors. No errors. And when I'm in front of him, he should move forward now. So I'm just going to back up because I want to be able to see him run at me. And it's not working. Oh, we have a null reference. I bet it has to do with the animations. Yep, he doesn't have all the animations we need. So we'll go up. He needs run, jump, fall, and idle. And I'm just going to pause the video and use a different um, mob. One that I know has all the animations that I need. So I'll just turn him off. I'll go up to my prefabs, mobs, uh, Dungeon Guardian has everything I need. So I'll drop him in. Let's start him up. I'm going to run in front of him. And there you go, when I'm about 10% in front of him. Well, 10% from dead center in front of him. And remember, it is a cone. He'll chase me. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like we're at 15 minutes, so we better call this one done, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.